Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Then the other uh, our issue is the social issue. Now, particularly the organized retail uh, uh, runs into stiff opposition from social groups. What are these social groups? Now, organized retail is is is, is a company. This one. I mean, the retailers have cash rich and they have deep pockets, and they can basically offer discounts. Uh, they offer. Uh, fresh goods and they offer the quality hygiene and all that. So, but they are competing. I mean, they are, these people are competing with Kirana shops. Kirana shops are small, uh, street, on the street shops who basically, uh, make their livelihood by selling, uh, the, uh, uh, the vegetables, fruits and other uh, items. So, but there are 12 million of them in India. I think maybe it has increased. Uh, these are, this is an unorganized sector and they basically get, uh, they, they are competing with the organized sector. So, since they are large numbers and vote banks, they try to agitate and try to create problems for the organized retail. So, the organized retail outlets both local and global run into problems with Kirana shops as well as hawkers. Now, these are, could be some sometimes political, sometimes social. Now, in other words, they are hawker networks and Kirana shop networks and they basically have uh, political connections. So, they try to create problems for the organized retail. And Reliance Fresh was vandalized and is barred from opening shops in some states. In other words, there are some states in India uh, where you, the Lions Fresh cannot open their shops. This is because the state wants to protect the Kirana shops. So, particularly this becomes important because the Kirana shops are small and medium players and they are an organized sector, but on the, uh, but on the positive side, they are vote banks and they have a lot of political connections. So, they basically try to uh, vandalize this and this, this quite at scale impact on governance of the global companies. Once the uh, government, uh, the uh, companies like Walmart and others, they try to enter into emerging markets, they do it with, uh, they are with deep pockets and they want to basically uh, come into the market and offer all kinds of discounts at cheaper prices and other 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 uh, comfortable conveniences so that the they can wipe out the all the competition so the, the people there is a disquiet in the emerging markets at the scale impact on the governance of global companies now you can also understand that the the governments are also are not are very disquiet about uh, the uh, global companies getting in touch with the farmers Bangalore Traders Association, Traders Action Committee and Swadeshi Jangram Munch activists protested against Metro Centre in Bangalore, uh, by in Bangalore Mandi. So, Metro is, um, is a, tr is a trader, is a B2B interface. It stands between the farmers and the, uh, Kirana shops and it, when it opened the shops in, uh, uh, in Bangalore, with the permission of the government, then the Bangalore Traders Association and Swadeshi Jangran March activities, they basically protested against the opening of this. So, whether it is a uh, retailer or whether it is a wholesaler, there are people, there, there is opposition from western groups. Whether it is right or wrong, this is not an issue. The issue is, they hear are social groups who claim that they are being affected by the entry of this uh, organized 
retailers or wholesalers or something and that needs to be taken into account when you are starting the office. Why foreign wholesalers struggle in India? They despite company value proposition. When a tremendous need for an intermediary, the wholesalers struggle in India. So, the, the, as we saw before, there is a there is a lot of wastage of food and there is a tremendous need for an intermediary between the farmers and the retailers. So the retailers can be an organized retailer or organized kirana shops, whatever it is. But between the farmers, somebody has to take the, the farm output and then clean them up and make it possible and then uh, bring make it make it um, uh, convenient in terms of convenience package them and give it to the Kirana shops and that is the kind of thing that Metro Cash and Carry and Walmart and others are trying to do. For businesses seeking a national presence, it is important to investigate what policy spheres come under the purview of central government and what involves the local description. In other words, in India, there are, the, I mean, like everywhere else, there are uh, three or four layers of governance. First one is the uh, Indian government, which is the uh, central government, which is the policy making. It has to basically make the policy regarding the special economic zones, regarding the FDI and all that. Once they approve, then the state government has to give all the facilities, the land and the permissions, particularly because agriculture is in the domain of the state. And once the state government gives the permission, the, the corporations of the uh, uh, cities, they need to get uh, give permissions because the hawkers and the Kirana shops, they are all basically uh, controlled by the corporations. So, there are three or four layer control governance con that, that manages this uh, policy. So, they Basically, one should have connections with, with all this. In India, the central government oversaw FDI, while the state government had sole control of several other areas, including agriculture marketing. So, depending on which area, which vertical you are entering, one has to be extremely careful in ca calculating the risks. So, that is what uh, we have we have seen in terms of uh, the uh, the risk that uh, happens um, uh, in Indian food supply chain. It is it's very important one has to look at this. For example, what are the risks that they are facing? The risk is one is adulteration, the second one is use of uh, these uh, chemicals, uh, 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 this one and third one is the social groups, uh, unorganized sector uh, trying to uh, protest against the entry of the foreign players or even not even foreign, it is the large organized sectors. For example, Reliance Flash is not foreign, it is a company uh, which is Indian. So, the, the permission granted to Reliance Flash has been vandalized. So, these are the social group risks in addition to the risk that you get from uh, your supply chain you get the risk from the government as well as the uh, the social groups or resources uh, and so on. But the, your usual risks like delivery, failure of trucks and or the crops uh, failure, these are the kinds of things that uh, that are common, but you should be able to deal with other kinds of risks like the social risks in the, in the retail area. So, governance uh, of the food supply chain. So, as we saw the governance is basically uh, to when once you have the supply chain, somebody has to uh, do the supply demand matching. In other words, what is it that is required in the market and what is it that is available from the farmers and how do you match the farmers to the retailers. I mean, that is the fundamental problem of governance. Now, the, as we saw, the governance has three layers. Once you know uh, what what your market needs are, then you want to do the partner selection. You want to do once uh, the coordination of who does what and when and finally, you want to execute the entire supply chain. But is it possible to visualize all these three steps for the food supply chain that we had described so far? 
Well, the answer is it's a big no. So let's look at that. There are th we have seen there are three types of uh, networks. The network governance model, highly centralized external broker like Lee and Frank. This is an orchestrated model like Volum International or, or Lee and Fung and so on where there is an external that means there is somebody who is outside of the farming area. He does not do warehousing, he does not do the knee retailing, he does not do any farming, but he does the brokering. So, that is the kind of thing. Volum does this in the food supply chain area and we will also look at the each Opal, which is a, a ITC wand uh, initiative, uh, which does this kind of thing. Second one is the participant side governance model elected by elected board. This is popular in healthcare diaries and cooperatives. This kind participant side govern, uh, governance is common even in India. For example, Amul is a diary, is an Anand diary. This one, it is uh, stays in, it is out of Gujarat state of state, Gujarat state in India, and basically it is governed by an uh, elected board. So there are small farmers, literally millions, millions of farmers, who basically have one or two cows or buffaloes, and they take the milk, they deliver it to the villages, and somebody in the village they he basically collects this and it is they make ice cream and other other things process the milk and sell it back so this is the kind of thing that they, that in diaries there are several diaries even in india which using an elected board participant shared governance model uh, with a lead player for example it can be a producer driven or it can be buyer driven in case of a producer driven we'll see shortly that there is somebody who is a, who is a big manufacturer or multi multinational who has lot of power in the value chain he becomes the lead player and he basically manages the entire thing and the others have to listen to them because he gives them the market share there are buyer driven things like this basically the emergence of big retailers like Walmart, Carrefour, Levi and others has they become the buyer driven and all the suppliers supply to them. So they directly although they do not have they may not have a brand of their own, but they get all the all the products and everything they, they basically control who does what and at what point in time and when do they supply and how much and so on. So basically the, the governance mechanism uh, exists is the is the in the buyer this one. So all three governance values in practice and none of them proved superior. But if yes since we are dealing with um, uh, 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 with the food supply chain buyer driven supply chains by retailers are very common in food supply chain you know for example uh, Walmart itself is an example of Tesco and others and so on producer driven uh, supply chains in food markets or as we give an example is for coffee and other things where there are big players big market players in in the area of food of course in terms of diaries and cooperatives, we gave, an, gave the example of uh, Amul in India, which is a, supposed to be a classic perfect example of um, uh, of a, a an elected board which controls the diary and it makes lot of profits and even the, all the customers as well as uh, uh, the participants in the diary are very happy. And of course, we have the centralized broker system. There is, uh, there are several uh, uh, brokers or orchestrators in the food supply chain and they include um, Olam International, which is a foreign company, which is a Singapore based company and uh, oh, oh, they are basically and also uh, 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 eChopal, which is an ITC uh, initiative. If you, if you if we analyze for the scale of the food supply chain that we have in India, the kind of governance is is very little. In other words, most of these 
uh, this one is driven by uh, driven by is made to made to uh, market and it is like push and the farmers produce something and then try to sell it in the market. So there is no supply demand matching using any of this. It is a greatest need. We'll see that. What are producer driven chains? In producer driven chains, the elite form often a large multinational plays central role in coordinating a distributed network of suppliers. So this is basically what we have seen uh, who does what in in the chain and for what order when and how much all this and what are the specifications of this, what is the kind of equipment that should be used and he is also responsible for the labor and uh, contamination and other kinds of issues, hygiene and all these issues in this. So the lead form controls R&D, product design and innovation and the type of chains are, this type of char chains are characteristic of capital and technology intensive industries such as automobiles, ICT and semiconductors. So, but food manufacturers play a major role in organizing producer driven supply chains. Although challenged by large retailers, food in the food, the retailers are, are very common to be the lead players. Their power lies in, in processing, in supplying and processing key commodities such as high value bean crops like coffee or cocoa or key ingredients for a wide variety of processed foods like processing tomatoes. Now, for example, if you are purchasing tomatoes in large quantities, then you know it is used in ketchup, it is used in tomato juice, it is a variety of ways. So, if you can control, then you can call the shots. But on the other hand, if you are a small tomato producer, then you are trying to sell whatever you have produced, then you know you have to listen to someone else. So, this is this is basically uh, the type, but producer driven chains are not very common in the food area. The buyer driven chains, large retailers or brands like Target, Walmart, uh, Carrefour, they basically play a lead role in sourcing from decentralized networks of independent suppliers, defining product and process specifications and standards. So, here we are set the standards and uh, they tell who what's, who does what and so on defining uh, depending on what their customers want their their sourcing of the customers then they try to find out what what is to be done and so on so basically they dictate this one the buyer driven chain tends to be characteristic of labor intensive consumer goods industries such as apparel footwear agro industry and consumer electronics so these are the, the because there is not much of a brand issue in all this. So, they basically control, uh, they are controlled by the buyer driven. In India, big retailers such as Moore, Reliance and Big Bazaar are still in their early stages and the regulations play a roadblocks. So, in India, do you have buy driven chains? Not very much, maybe in April but not in certainly in food. So, but there, there are uh, very big um, retail shops uh, coming up, uh, retail uh, uh, chains and they are still in early stages, maybe they are all 5 to 5, 6, 7 years old and the regulations play a uh, roadblock. For example, can the retailer directly uh, have contract farming with uh, the, the farmers? The answer is yes in some states, no in some states and can the retailer directly source, is it possible to source from uh, uh, from the farmer directly? Then the answer is yes in some states, no in some states and in the overall the big retailers are comfortable sourcing from the mandi rather than going directly to the farmers. So, what is the governance of food FCN? Generally, even big farmers have no place in governance except in cooperatives. So, if you have an Amul cooperative, then you have a place in this because you have at least their right to elect uh, one of the members of uh, the cooperative uh, board. But 
the otherwise if you are producing whatever you are producing you have to basically take it to the market and sell. Governments help the farmers through Monday procuring a comfortable price for the pro, uh, public distribution system. So, we talked about the Monday and Monday is it a governance model? Yes, it is. It does the supply demand matching to some extent between the farmers and this one. The farmer can get his goods to the Monday and then find uh, somebody to buy it if he is lucky. So, but uh, the Monday is, is procuring at a comfortable price in the for the PDS public distribution system whatever items that are needed they are procured at a government fixed price. And Food Corporation of India for example, uh, is acts as on behalf of the government and owns 5000 warehouses and employees and other accessories, but it is rated poor. In other words, the food corporation uh, 5000 warehouses, they are supposed to be go down, go downs, they are not, do not have the software like uh, WMS or, or transportation this one and they have to hire vehicles and so on. So, there are lots of problems associated with the warehousing and also storage, it gets spoiled and so on. So, basically the PDS procurement for uh, the the ration system, it is uh, it is in the hands of the government. Government and Monday is also a, a sort of a government controlled uh, marketplace where the uh, the farmers need to bring their 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 stuff to the to the Monday and then find somebody who can buy it there. So that's a supply demand matching issue. Amul, each Opal and other private players led, play a lead role in the procurement. So, basically if you look at the governance of food supply chain in India, there are a few private players you can mention. And there is the, there is the Monday that is used to procuring for a comfortable price for the farmers and there is the PDS system which the government uses to buy uh, gra grains from the farmers for the public distribution system and Food Corporation of India helps them. So, they are like Amul, each Opal and all that, they are the players who do this. So, I mean given the, the size of uh, 106 million farmers and 400 million workers and 1.2 billion people who are to be this one and 28 states and 4 union, 6 or 4 to 6 union territories, it becomes thoroughly inadequate and the governance process need to be studied, need attention and improvement. So, let us look at one of the examples of an orchestrator from India, ITC is Imperial Tobacco Company but it is now called ITC and each Opal, Chopal is a meeting place, each Opal is a meeting place. So, each Opal infrastructure and services, what are the, each Opal is, the, is an initiative from uh, uh, ITC and they call it empowering the farmer, they call it a social initiative empowering the farmers, but they use this each Opal basically to procure all the materials they need for their food. Apart from the tobacco or this one, ITC also is into the food supply chain, food arena. They manufacture a lot of food products. So, and they process a lot of food, this one. It is a brand uh, for FMCG and so on. So, basically what uh, ITC does is to procure uh, from soya beans to coffee beans to everything from the farmers directly. Now, it is, it has had a name of uh, you know direct cash transfer once the, this one, I mean they, they ensure, they want to ensure that the quality is good and so on, they supply seeds and all that. So, let us look at what it is. An internet kiosk in the house of a trained farmer called Sanchalak within walking distance of targeted farmers. So, there is a fellow called Sanchalak and he is a trained farmer 
and he is in, inside the house and uh, inside the village and he in the in his house he has a computer and other accessories that he has and through using the computer and the internet he can access the prices of the, all the commodities which are sold to the in the in the market and so on so for the within the walking distance of the target uh, farmers and warehousing hub is managed as well middlemen you see in the food supply chain there are lots of middlemen you know basically acting between the farmers and the mandi and the farmers and traders now itc does not want to uh, antagonize them so they said they use the they basically manage the warehousing hub and within a tractable distance you know tractors are used in agriculture here and tractors can be used to to transport whatever the fresh produce the ones uh, they buy it from the farmer they can they can be used for transporting uh, to the to the warehouse customized knowledge on the farm and risk management so basically the itc has knowledge about the farm and also about the risk they face better supply chain for itc lower transaction cost better value through traceability so they know where the buy, they are buying from and they have the quality quality issues are all sorted out and so since this is all done uh, through in the villages uh, then there is lower transaction cost and relevant real time information results in higher income commodity prices local weather news customized knowledge despite heterogeneity reduce transaction cost so basically the real time information which is which is needed to the farmers that they are doing what is the problem with an indian farmer the indian farmer doesn't know what is the market price so if say some trader comes and tells him look this is the price i have, i offer then he doesn't know whether to uh, to basically take it or leave it so direct marketing channel for farm produce in other words it offers a direct marketing channel you need not have to go through mandis so some states allow this itc because it is an indian company for certain uh, commodities certain crops like soya beans and others direct marketing channel for farm produce screen for quality demand aggregation for competitive prices and efficient logistics so basically once the farmer sells this to itc itc take control of the transportation because they don't want the any mishandling any manual handling any spoilage contamination adulteration to happen once it is their own so that is what their uh, their issue is so intermediaries roles are redefined there is so called they are called samayojaks coordinators who assist itc in setting up new each apples by conducting village surveys and by identifying best sanchalaks so itc has this um, it has something like 6500 each apples uh, right currently and they want to uh, open say ever five or six uh, each apples every day so that comes to about 2000 to 2500 a year so they want to they want to do this and somebody has to work for them so these coordinators are going to work for idc itc for this one uh, and they also set up and train one of this uh, uh, new uh, uh, sanchalax they manage the physical transportation of sales made by the each apple collect the price data from local auctions and maintain records so these coordinators and 1% commission on the product processed so this 1% may not look uh, very high but on the other hand uh, you know if the volume is high then what you get 1% is high so there is that is where uh, actually the the coordinators have all the motivation to work hard to increase the the transactions the selling price for the process for the borrower so what is the process 
suppose the farmer uh, has some harvested his crop, he carries a sample of his produce to the local kiosk and receives a spot quote from the samchalak. So, it is what it is, I mean the samchalaks are empowered, basically there is a distribution of power, they can give you a quote. And if he accepts the quote, he can then transport the produce directly to an ITC collection center and get payment within 2 hours. So, he gets a payment, the cash is transferred to his bank account immediately. So, the farmer has to take a sample, not the goods, to the kiosk and once the quality and other things are all assured, then he will get a quote if he accepts, he will get the money within 2 hours. And the material handling systems at ITC collection center ensure that tractors, trolleys or trucks can directly unload their produce without spilling any grain and a modern weightage, weight weigh bridge ensures precise weighing. The transportation cost is reimbursed to the farmer. If the farmer brings it to the uh, to the uh, warehouse, then it is reimbursed to him. So, in other words, this is spot buying. What ITC does is buying at the site of the farmer and if the farmer agrees, then they can transport it uh, to uh, their place. And also this weigh bridge is supposed to be uh, precise and there are no uh, hookups here because if it is a small farmer, there could be all kinds of uh, problems with the weight balance. If the farmer is located in a remote area, he has the option of selling his produce to a Sanchalak or to a nearby collection center. <coughs> so, basically they are trying to provide the transport, they are trying to give him the money and so on. So, 6500 are serving 4 million farmers and, vill and villages except uh, across 4000 villages in, in, in 10 states. ITC Limited plans to scale up to 20,000 each opals by 2012. I mean this uh, presentation was made in 2011 covering uh, 1 lakh villages from 40,000 to 100,000 and in 15 states serving 15 million farmers. So, the So, what are the, the, in the each opal, the Sanchalak, person selected and trained by ITC is an, uh, often each opal acts like a hub or an orchestrator who connects the various stakeholders in the ecosystem. So, if these are all the farmers and traders and so on, it becomes a structural hole in the social networking. According to social network theory, Sanchalaks are like structural holes static holes that can be strategically filled by connecting one or more ties to link to other disconnected components. In other words, these are all the farmers, these are all the retailers, these are all the traders and so on. So, there is, these are all could be dense networks, they know each other very well, but they do not know each other, they, one group does not know the other group and the Sanchalak plays the, play the role of a, of a structural hole in this theory. Sanchalak's key role in innovation, diffusion and information dissemination needs to be recognized. So, both innovation, diffusion and information dissemination are the roles of this uh, structural hole here. So, let us look at uh, another example that is um, about T. Opal, which is uh, an initiative by uh, the uh, 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 ITC, which is a uh, 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 imperial tobacco company, which is uh, does manufactures not only cigarettes but other FS, FMCG products. Let us look at uh, a company called Volum International, which is an orchestrator of global agri food networks. So, Volum International evolved into global leader in agriculture commodities with its base in Singapore from a small Nigerian company. So, it was a very small Nigerian company. Now it has moved to Singapore, and it has become uh, it has become uh, a, a global leader in agriculture commodities. What does it do? Walam does not own farms, 
but orchestrates a network of many small producers. Rolam International Limited supplies raw and processed agriculture commodities grown mainly by small and medium producers in developing and emerging countries to well established regional and international customers. In other words, if you are a retailer or you are a big customer, then they will supply you all this from this one. It is a global company. I mean, in other words, they source from Africa and they can supply it to US and they source from India, they can supply it to UK and so on. So, basically, it, they deal with small and medium uh, enterprise producers and it deals with both raw and processed agriculture commodities. They are raw commodities like cashews or uh, peanuts and other things, they are all uh, supplied and also processed agriculture commodities are all supplied. While I am directly engages in sourcing, that means it has connections with the farmers across the world, transport, warehousing and distribution of a broad range of commodities including cocoa, rice, timber, cashew nuts, cotton, coffee, sugar, sesame, she nuts and spices. So, Volum is supplier of many of the world's most prominent brands offering reliability, consistency, trust, traceability and other value add services. So, it is basically an orchestrator, it has an intermediary and it is a wholesaler and it has, it is global and it basically is between uh, the, uh, the farmers in the, in some countries. Africa, India, China and so on and the, the big retailers and the big customers uh, anywhere in the world. So, we see here that under the governance uh, this one, for all the parts of the governance there is a food supply chain, you have participant this one, you have producer driven uh, the governance, you have buyer driven governance which is buyer driven governance is the most popular and orchestration like particularly in sourcing uh, to OLM and each Opal and others. So, even in the agriculture supply chain, the, if you consider on the global scene, all the three part kinds of uh, governance patterns are, are, are popular. So, to this food supply chain, how do you want to conclude this? So, I mean the point is India, any, any economy has three sectors, the agriculture, the manufacturing and, and the services sector. Now, basically we have seen that uh, uh, the agriculture has comparative advantage in India because of its natural resources and we also mentioned gone through uh, the entire thing we found that the management of the resources and management of the supply chain need to be addressed. So, India need to move up the value chain, it has to concurrently maintaining vast manufacturing base, efficient demand driven agriculture and world class business services for the market and welfare of 1.2 billion consumers and provide world with high value goods and services. You see, the, the reason for this statement is it has to simultaneously or concurrently address all the three sectors of the economy, agriculture, manufacturing and services. See, in olden days people think the, the, the any economy moves from agriculture to manufacturing to services. It is that though they, they are three distinct, but they are not three distinct things. For example, agriculture requires services, agriculture requires manufacturing, manufacturing requ requires agriculture and manufacturing requires services and services require the inputs from both manufacturing and services. So, these are all basically intertwined and for that reason you need to move up value chain concurrently in all of them. So, how do you get a truly breakout food industry is possible? Creating awareness among the farmers, we have to create awareness among the farmers, demand driven agri-production, seed to feed culture. We said 
you know you you plant the seed depending on the feed you need and relaxing regulatory hurdles on sale of agriculture producers reducing taxes on processed food items and creating laboratories for nutritious food product development and testing and encouraging growth of strong food processing industry developing talent for rural supply chain management developing it enabled distribution backbone now if you look at the distribution backbone in india it is basically very basically very weak who we have warehouses uh, and so on in transportation and all those they are basically not professional we'll stop here